today. Herdsman Milker here at Martin's Dairy Farm. All right, Todd, what's this thing I have in my, in my hand? That's iodine foamer. And it, what am I supposed to do Free with dip. it? Yeah. Spray it on there. Okay. Yeah. Thing you do is strip. What strip mean? Strip to check to see if the quarters are all good. Okay, so just grab it. Yeah, you got. Show me one first. All right. It's a little stompy. Yeah, of course you have the stompy one. Yeah. All right, just grab this one. Right. to the cockroach cleanup here this morning once again with Jade of with Grace Services. Good morning to you, Jade. Hello. What's this? This is an axle machine and it's meant to flush out roaches and to kill them on contact. Okay. So this is basically going to let us know exactly where they're at. All right, do we have to turn it on here yes, first? Yes, we do. This big machine over there. And it's going to kind of, what's going to come out of the, the nozzle here? It's Ooh. a fog. A fog? Yep. All right, and where am I, where am I aiming at? So you go right in that cabinet right there. Why? Why that, the, this one? Because it looks disgusting. There's a lot of dead ones, so we know that they're there. All right, where do I turn Just, it on? You can get a little bit closer. Get closer. Okay. Get right in there. Okay. And pull the trigger. Are they going to come running out? A couple bursts, now you can let go of it. Okay. And that's just basically meant to, if they're in there, they are going to start scattering in a few minutes. Oh, I see some. See? That one right there? Yeah. Exactly. That's what it does. Oh. It gets them, uh... It kind of smells yucky, too. Yes, it does. Well, it's a, uh... It's a uh, pyrethrin. It's actually uh, made from chrysanthemum. Uh, oh, really? Right? Yeah, so it's basically an organic product, but it's oil based as well. So Now you're hoping to get them out so that you guys well, can clean them out of well, the Well, not space. necessarily. We're, no? not, we're not trying to get them out, but we want to locate them. The, the Axol machine will, will get into cracks and crevices to where we actually can't get into. Oh, so, that's really a live one, isn't it? Yeah, we're flushing them out. Unfortunately, they hide in cracks and crevices, so the purpose of this the machine oh, here. Oh, he's really moving. Uh, there's there's quite a few. Oh my gosh, look at all of this. How many are there? Um, half a dozen, maybe more. Oh, I think I'm getting sick. <laughs> maybe more than a, more oh, than a dozen. Look at them crawling. Now, is this stuff going to kill them, you think? Yeah, it's, it's a contact kill, but like I said, it's also going to flush as well. Uh, where else do you want to go? Uh, we can go um, actually under the sink here. Under the sink, too? Okay. Ready? And do you want to stick that? All the way back there? Right down in that little crack. Right here? 
Yep. Okay. That's good right now. Okay. You don't want to use too much. Because you don't want to drown them. <laughs> That's what I feel like we're doing here. Oh, man. Now, what do cockroaches like? Why do they come to people's houses? Oh, I wish I knew. I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> but, uh... What attracts them? Food, water? Food, heat, water. Um, it's a combination of a lot of things that, that causes them to come into the house, uh, come into people's homes. But really, people, if they need to take care of them, they should call professional services yes. like yourself. Yes, because you, you really cannot get rid of them yourself. You can attempt, but it's not going to not gonna be as effective. Well, I hope we uh, are able to do the job here this morning. Jay, thank you very much. Oh, not a problem. Thank you. getting our hands dirty here this morning. Uh, we are at Associated Paper Stock. I'm joined by Mike A. Jr. Good morning to you, Mike. Good morning. All right, so what are we doing? Get right into it. What we're doing, this is the product that comes in from Geauga and Trumbo County from the Recycling Drop-Off Box Program. Our trucks come in throughout the night and throughout the day and dump the material on, on our floor here, and this is, this is what we have. So this is the first stage of the recycling. What we're going to do is remove all the plastic bagging, Aww. which is how the citizens bring it to the boxes, and essentially get the material ready for recycling. All right, let's get into it. So is there any message in the madness or just kind of rip them? Rip and dump. Rip and dump. Oh, yeah. As you can see, you know, the citizens folks to rinse out their material before they take it to the box. Case in point, I just dumped a bunch of cans and bottles. Oh. Definitely were not rinsed out. So. Hey, our gloves are safe. Though. All the workers have safe gloves, They right? are. They're, they're puncture-proof, um, so they can't be, you never oh, know what's geez. going in. Yeah, there's a lot of glass in this one right here. Broken glass, you can't find needles, you'll find metals that don't belong. What we do with the bags is kind of toss them aside. At the end, we'll okay. gather them all up and throw them in a, in a baler. That's the we do. And I'm sure you get a lot of stuff that isn't recyclable. We do, and we have a few examples here. Like this, what, like this thing? This, this doesn't look recyclable. Not at all. Why would Not someone send this to you? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> when you have a drop-off box program, um, you can't always monitor them. Yeah. People would rather not have to pay for garbage at home. If they can take it here and hide it and not get caught with it, this is what happens. Then we have to put up with this. All right, well, this is part one, and now we're going to head over to part three. We're skipping part two because it's the dirtiest part, so you're going to have to wait for that one. Well, what we're going to do is quality control. Make sure that in the process of recycling, nothing else has gotten onto this conveyor belt that doesn't belong. But these number two plastics. All right, now I see a bunch of milk stuff. It's not just Detergent bottles, um, coffee Is that supposed to be in there? Is that uh, right there? No, this is okay. supposed to be like this. Um, the potted plants actually are number two, so as long as they're fairly clean. All right. And the other thing we'll do is just kind of make sure everything stays on the belt. Unfortunately, when we dump it, we'll lose some of the material. We just make sure everything goes on. Key grades or the key materials are milk jugs, detergent bottles, coffee cans, and the... Um, I guess the pots for, right. the, for the plan. So anything that isn't this, I should be grabbing out, right? Yep, grab it out, just throw it aside, we worry about it later. Oh, so that's one. What's this? You guys do not like plastic bags, I remember. Not with this material. We do bail them, we do it separately. It's one of the processes we try and catch at the beginning. Okay, so folks at home, if they're bagging up their plastic, they kind of keep the bags away, just throw it in the bin itself, right? Yes, what we pre <laughs> would prefer them to do is take it, dump the material into the containers, and then still put the bags in, but then when it gets here, we don't have to do as much. I like this part of the job. It's still dirty, but not as bad as the rest, but there's a lot more to show. In the next hour, we're going up there. The dirtiest part of it all. That's coming up. This is what's considered the dirtiest, and I'm going to go with probably the loudest part of the job, right, Mike? Most definitely, most definitely. What we got here is the sort line. So after all the finished product has been sorted, it comes up and drops onto our waterfall system. Quick description of the waterfall system is, this belt runs slightly faster than that belt, and what it does is help to meter out the material. Um, what we're going to do here for the first part is we are sorting what we call number two plastic. Okay. Um, it's a two-part job. It's one, we're looking for all the number two plastics which we have listed. It's, it's the core ingredients are our detergent bottles, um, the milk jugs, water, big, large water bottles. But we're also catching anything that might have got missed while we were sorting the bags down below. Mm -hmm. If it makes it up here and it's still in the bag, our job is to rip that bag open so the rest of the individuals don't have to worry about it. Okay, all right, let's see what we get coming through here. Now, what's the least dirtiest job? Least dirtiest
dirtiest job will probably be mine. <laughs> uh, my job primarily is to buy and sell and other recyclables that come in here. So what I do every day is make sure that there's enough material coming into our MRF, whether it be non-fiber, plastic, yeah. aluminum cans, or it be our fiber end, newspaper, cardboard. But my job is to make sure there's enough material coming in here from the surrounding counties and from any business so these guys can keep working. Well, you started here, sorry. Right, we're going to get into it now. All right. Our main man down there is taking all of our good stuff. So we're going to steal whatever we can get from him. All right, so this one, right? Yes. All right, that goes. And again, what anytime else? we're looking, you know, you just glance at the bottom. Just got some free time. You got an HDPE. This is so disgusting. Like, look at all this stuff. Oh, this. See, again, things that should, you know, dust, sawdust, and oh. woodshed, needles, you know. Oh. Class. So you're really going to make sure you're not missing you anything, to, right? You have to be active. You don't want to miss anything, and you always want to be checking. That kind of comes to get the hang of it. So your workers really got to be on their game, so to speak. They do. They do. <laughs> there's not a dull moment. There's not, there's not any slowdown in it. If, if, if the ball oh, trains are coming through, what they need to do is find the, the materials that also come through that you don't see every day that might be oh. a number two plastic or whatever grade they're sorting. Case in point of not rinsing out, you know, peanut butter should nasty. not be in here. These that should not be should here. Not be in here. They're not recyclable. These should be clean. Oh. You know? I, like, I can't look at this. I can't look at the sorter anymore. I think it's making me sick. This has been an awesome experience. Thank you so much with our dirty gloves here for showing off what it takes to sort recyclables here at Associated Paper Stock. It's been a great experience for Dirty Jobs. I'm going to be doing what exactly over here? Uh, we're going to change the oil today. All right, and Stacy's going to help me out. So what, what's Stacy going to have me do in here? Well, he's going to, he's already removed the, uh, the oil cap. So right now you're going to remove the oil filter, which is down in the middle there. All right, so I put this down here. Put it right on top of on the filter. On top of this filter here. Mm -hmm. And then... Give it a good turn. Two, three... So it's not as dirty as I thought it would be. It's kind of changed over the years, hasn't it? It has. All right, I'm good. Now I can take this and give this to him. Now what am I going to do? Now you're going to reach down in there with your hand. Okay. Oh, this is going to be dirty, isn't it? Yuck. Ew. Oh. oh. Okay, so a little bit of grease, right? This isn't too bad. Now what do I do with this thing? Now you have to pull this out of here. You mean where all the grease is? Right. Of course they do. <laughs> all right. So wait, go like this. Pull. No. Yeah, that's my hand. That's disgusting. All right, this is actually not that bad, though. Now what? Oh, there's a new pretty clean one. And I put that on there, right? Is that it? All right, now put it back. It's actually not so bad, guys. And how long do I wait? Oh, wait, you have to do that clicky thing. Oh, so then I take my hands and I get your tools greasy. Sorry. <laughs> and then what comes next? What comes next? Now we have to tighten that down. All right. Am I going the right way? You're going the right way. Okay. Ew. What comes after this? Do we... Keep going. Keep huh? going. Well, now we've got to get it up in the air. Well, the car's up on the lift now, and I'm trying to get this oil drain underneath. All right. Where am I supposed to go here, Kevin? You're going to go like right this? here, because right when you here. loosen that, it's going to shoot out a little All bit. All right. And Stacy has been kind enough to loosen it right a little bit, and then what? Which way do I go? Towards me. Towards you. Is it going to spill all over me? Yeah, you can use your fingers now. I can use my finger? Yeah. Oh, of course I won't be using my finger. What if I lose this cap? It'll just go in there. Okay. What's this it won't go anywhere. Um, but basically, what are we doing here? We're draining the oil. We're draining the oil. Oh, this is disgusting. And this really isn't that bad, but... Ah! Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's not too terrible. Now it goes into this oil drain, right? Yep. Then we'll put that drain plug back in, and then we'll put the oil in. And Stacy was saying, this I've done the hardest parts of the job. I was going to i was gonna let them, you know, put the oil in, because I thought that would be the tough part, but that's the easy part. That's the easy part. And this is a lot cleaner than it used to be back in the day, huh? It is. Nowadays, it's almost like being a surgeon when they take care of your car. Look at this, like, coming out of all these little holes and everything. How long does it take? A couple minutes, normally. All right, so that's why... This oh. isn't too bad. Oh, look at that. It's like a, it's like a waterfall of oil. <laughs>